To start this week's show, we're heading out into the field where my partner Mike Parker is standing by. Mike, from the looks of it, you're dressed like you plan on getting a little wet. Hey there, Willie. I'm here along the banks of the Chop Tank River, just outside of the town of Preston, Maryland, here in Talbot County. So I'm actually on the Talbot County side of the river here. And you know, one of the big things that's going on right now, well, we're kind of in the middle of trapping season in these parts, run through about the middle of March. And what do we trap here on Delmarva and on the eastern shore? Well, you know, it's the good old muskrat, very popular. And where do they live? Well, there's plenty of them out there in the salt marsh. I think I found the perfect guy to show me around. But to get out there, well, I'm going to have to uh, get off dry land. See you out there. And with just a quick pull of an outboard motor, Morgan Bennett has us cruising across the chop tank in this old wooden skiff, where it's just a short trip from shore to marsh. Now I'll admit, I don't know much about trapping. But the first thing I'm learning about trapping muskrats is that it also involves trapping raccoons. Oh, yeah. You can't see it? Where, where are we looking? Uh, right in here. You see this? This is a little drain for the marsh. And the raccoons walk up and down here on low tide. Uh-huh. When I caught him in the body grip. Uh, raccoons eat muskrats. So I need to catch them as fast as I can so they don't eat the rats out of my traps. Now a typical marsh raccoon like this one weighs about six or seven pounds and while it's not very valuable on the fur market, its value can be measured by the amount of muskrats and duck eggs it will no longer be feeding on out here. Another quick boat ride, and we've reached Morgan's primary muskrat trap line. Time to get out of the boat. About 140 traps, each marked with a black piece of cloth. And for Morgan, a pretty good start when the very first trap is tripped and holding a rat. You set it in the path where the muskrat's going to be swimming. And when he hits the, uh, when he hits the, uh, the trigger, the trap snaps shut and kills him. The fur has value. Um, it's made into coats and trim, and also the meat has value. It's a big thing on the eastern shore. So no, no part of this animal goes to waste. The thing with muskrats is muskrats are a prey species um, in biological terms. They reproduce far in excess of the capacity of the ecosystem to carry them. One by one, we work our way down the line. What's the count? <sighs> 15. Checking, pulling, and resetting traps with a pretty impressive success rate. You see that? A few dozen traps in, and it's time to unload and take a rest. Yeah, muskrats built this. This is what we call a house. They built it for shelter. They have their young in it. They raise their young. Industrious little animals. Couple in there, a lot in there. I mean, it can be anywhere in a house, it can be anywhere from one to seven or eight. By law, trappers are required to be licensed, use only approved traps, and check their traps every single day they're set. <laughs> Which out here means a grueling routine of walking several hours through the unforgiving marsh. That's tough enough. <laughs> Try doing that while also filming and protecting camera equipment. Oh. Well, for those of you who watch the show on a weekly basis, you know that a lot of times it's pretty much a, a one-man deal here. It's me and the camera, Chuck out in the field with the camera, just one person at a time. And it is a little challenging out here in the salt marsh. <laughs> this stuff, this is not easy to walk through. You know, you, you get in there and uh, you sink in pretty quick. So I give all the credit in the world to that guy over there. <laughs> You'll be glad to see this. This is a deer path. A nice, hard, dry deer path. <laughs> easy walking. No muskrats, but easy walking. But like the trapping season itself, even this can't last. And before long, we're crawling through some of the toughest terrain yet. But it's worth it, as Morgan pulls out rat after rat. There's a black rat. Earning about six or seven dollars a piece by current fur trading prices. 
Not to mention the key ingredient in a personal family recipe. <laughs> I bake it. You cook it like a, much like you would cook a, a duck in the oven. If you're, if you're used to cooking ducks, you would cook it very similarly. A little poultry season, a little bacon, a little onion, and bacon. Muskrats aren't tough, so you don't have to, you don't have to take excessive measures with them. You just want to make sure they're done. But for this lifelong trapper, it's all as much food for the soul as for the table. Pure enjoyment of the sport. Don't come out here if you don't want to get wet. Yeah, that's pretty much right. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife uh. management and the chance to educate others. I've done it, I've always done it. And no matter what else I was doing at the time, whenever trapping season rolled around, I at least managed to get a few traps set. I love it. I never set a trap in my life that I didn't want to run to the next day. It's been no average experience from my point of view. And a new appreciation you can only grasp if you're there. Get outdoors, Del Marva. Well, I definitely had a blast and learned more about trapping in one day than I thought I ever would. You know, I'm also learning that uh, a bunch of muskrats like this is just pretty heavy. Man, these babies will weigh you down. If you want to learn more about trapping, you can go to the Maryland Fur Trappers Association website. It is MarylandTrappers.com. As always, you'll find a link on OutdoorsDelMarva.com as well. My special thanks to Morgan Bennett, and we'll be right back.